in theory, it is a very simple thing. You take, uh, you pump the uh, pollution out of like a factory, say a steel plant or a coal plant or something like that, pump it into one tank, combine it with some chemicals that, that holds onto the CO2, pump that into another tank where you heat it up and you strip the CO2 out of it and then dump it into a third tank where you like turn it into liquid <laughs> and then you put it on a ship or in some pipes or a truck or whatever you want and put it, and send it to a well and, and lock it underground. Uh, so it all sounds extremely simple and, and it's been around for a long time because it is so simple, but uh, it's not as easy in practice to turn it into like a big scalable thing that we need. So wait, does it work? It works then on a small scale. Yeah. Um, but has anyone been able to do it on a big enough scale that gives uh, some confidence that this could be a big thing? Yeah. I mean, it depends on how you define big enough. I mean, we're as Tim mentioned, the, the numbers we're, we're pulling like 40 million uh, tons of carbon out of the air right now with this technology. So that sounds like a lot, but we're pumping 40 billion into the air oh, as we God. speak. And so uh, per year, that is. Um, and so. You've got some, um, there, there's like a, a, a thing in Norway that's pumping like a million tons under the sea. It's been doing that for like 20 years. I mean, this, this technology has been around a while. They're doing that, they've been doing that for 20 years to avoid a carbon tax. So with, with enough financial incentive, they, they have been trying to ramp up this technology, but nobody has done it at the massive scale we need. And, and we're going to need like 800 million tons a year almost by 2030 wow. if we're going to have any hope of this thing like magically solving our climate change problems. Why are companies spending so much money on it right now? Is it a result of governments pushing them to do so? That's part of it. it. They're not pushing them like with a stick. They're they're luring them with a carrot. And so like the the IRA, the big climate bill that we passed last year, uh, you can get eighty five dollars, I think, per ton or something for for the carbon that you store, which all of a sudden that makes the technology um, like economic for a lot of these oil companies. And they're looking ahead and they're seeing, OK, you know, Europe has has a carbon market and they've put a pretty substantial price on carbon. The U.S. is giving you a, t a tax credit. And so you can take this this carbon stuff it underground and then say, hey, you person, Tim, you're burning millions of car tons of carbon. You pay me money for a as a credit for the carbon that I'm storing underground. And all of a sudden you take an oil company that's like it's watching its primary product get you know, uh, vilified and people are trying to avoid using it, all of a sudden it can take its sort of core competency, which is drilling into the ground and making holes in the ground and turn that into a new uh, revenue line, which is like carbon credit, storing carbon for other people that everybody wants to do right now. Is there anything dangerous about putting carbon I was just going to add, that's under the the ground. Ground. I, was, I was thinking the same thing as Mark describes this. It's like getting sent in under the ocean, which sounds okay kind of well, in theory until it doesn't work yeah, <laughs> yeah. or something yeah. like that well that's the thing in theory it, it makes perfect sense because we're all the carbon that we've sucked out of the ground for the past hundred years was underground for millions of years before that so you can theoretically take this stuff and put it underground forever but it's it's easier said than done they've, they've had problems you know this story that's in bloomberg today which i really recommend it's really interesting uh you know chevron has spent tons of money on this project in australia and they keep having problems with getting the stuff getting enough carbon underground and so they, they they made these promises they got tax breaks to put the carbon underground and they said we'll save this much carbon for you if you give us this this much tax breaks and then they haven't been able to put that much carbon underground so they've had to go out and find other ways buy carbon offsets and stuff and so um, that's one thing. Uh, the danger of it, though, is is in sort of the process that goes on beyond, because when I'm talking about moving carbon into different tanks and you're using chemicals and stuff, that also releases uh, chemicals. Uh, you have chemicals that you gas off when you're like isolating carbon. The other thing is you have to think about these massive plants take a lot of energy. So in some cases, you're burning more energy to capture carbon than you are actually capturing the carbon. So it's kind of like, what are we doing here? Why don't we just build more EVs or something? I mean, that's what that's what the environmentalists say. And I have to say, personally, kind of, you know, there's a little bit of I mean, I think we have to keep experimenting with it. But as it is right now, it kind of feels like maybe we should be doing something else with all this money. I don't know. Well, that's a perfect segue to my next question, which is, you know, you write a lot about climate change, you write a lot about energy, and you write a lot about the solutions to the crisis that we're facing. In your opinion, you write for Bloomberg opinion, where does carbon capture fall on these list of solutions? I think it, it could be very high. There's there's car, there's this carbon catching 
capture, and then there's also direct air capture, where you just stick a fan or a filter in the air and suck carbon directly out of the air. That also has a lot of promise. Um, taking carbon, you know, planting trees, planting swamps, all that stuff, anything you can do to absorb carbon and put it underground, to me, is good. Because at the rate we're going, you know, we are not really stopping the use of fossil fuels fast enough to avoid mm. more catastrophic climate change and warming happening Meaning in the future beyond net zero yeah exactly we're not going to meet net zero by 2050 at the rate we're going that's why everybody wants that's one reason why envi some environmentalists do want the carbon capture because you know look it is kind of a magic solution if it works and so i'm all for continuing to experiment with it and and we need to do everything we can so i i, I wouldn't rule it out uh, but it is it, right now it needs to find some sort of they need to find some sort of magic solution for the magic solution to get it to actually be that all that magical. Well, but should governments be pouring the 83 billion dollars that they have poured for the last 30 years into supporting subsidizing whatever these projects if you know they don't work? I think the one in Australia was supposed to capture 80 percent of the carbon dioxide that was emitted and it. It does less than half, I think. You know, is, this, is that a good use of taxpayer money? Uh, arguably, no, because you could argue that they that it is another form of a sub subsidy for fossil fuel companies. These big oil companies get subsidies in the forms of tax breaks and all kinds of stuff. This is another thing where, like, here we're going to give you all this money to help you find this new business. I mean, you can argue that they're they're a massive. Uh, they're, they're huge in terms of our economy. You know, they hire a lot. They employ a lot of people. They generate a lot of economic uh, activity. So we maybe owe it to them to help them out, give them a hand. And again, we're looking for all the climate solutions we can get. But we do have to uh, make sure that the, the money is being spent wisely. 40 seconds left, Mark. What is the number one thing we can do for climate solution, in your opinion? The number one thing is there is no one number one thing. The number one thing is to make sh in terms of what we can do as people. Yeah is make sure that we have uh, decision makers uh, in office that uh, understand this issue and are, are willing to, to take chances to, do, to fix it, uh, that, that acknowledge there is a problem and, and are seeking solutions. Uh, so that's the thing that we can do. I mean, obviously we can you know, try to be green, but there's nothing will make as big a difference as say what Apple could do or, or what ExxonMobil could do. And so pushing for, to use our influence in that way is what we can do.